So to be able to analyze such data, we need to have these four different things. Number one, we need to know what does the microbiome represent? And one of the important things about the microbiome is that it doesn't characterize a single organism. It characterizes a community of microorganisms that have some kind of a relationship to each other. The second thing that we need to understand is how can we generate digital data that represents this community? And so here we need to speak a little bit about different types of metagenomic sequencing, uh, including amplicon sequencing, uh, whole metagenomic sequencing, uh, metatranscriptomic, and others. So how can we actually study the genomic material in a given sample from a microbiota, a community of microbes, and understand what is happening or how many different microorganisms do we see? Uh, once we have that sequencing data, we need to understand what can we do with such data. So how do we actually go from having raw sequences of individual genomic elements uh, to some kind of an interpretable uh, um, image or um, uh, maybe a statistical comparison that we know what to say about? So here we'll talk about diversity, uh, presence and abundance, and maybe uh, different types of uh, functionality uh, that essentially some of this, uh, some of these microorganisms can be associated with. And that is essentially one of the objectives of this kind of analysis is to be able to interpret what is going on. And so that heavily relies on our ability to annotate uh, the different elements that we can find. And here, the limiting factor is that there are many more microorganisms than and a lot of variation within these microorganisms than what it has been annotated. Um, and, and obviously this annotation continues as an effort into uh, characterization of the different microorganisms. Okay, so again, if there are any questions along the way, uh, feel free to add them in the chat and those will be very useful for us to continue this discussion. So uh, for metagenomic sequencing, um, okay, so thank you, Rapita. Uh, where can I find the lecture and Q&A session schedule for the beginner course? Um, so I'm not sure what the beginner course is. Uh, for this metagenomic uh, course, we have a page that has all of that information. If you're speaking about the introduction to bioinformatics, uh, maybe you can put your email in the chat and I'll uh, send you that as well. Okay, so today we will take a look at one of these examples, uh, one of the uh, types of sequencing that is uh, commonly used for metagenomic sequencing analysis or for metagenomic sequencing is the sequencing of the 16S ribosomal RNA gene. Uh, so the 16S, what's called amplicon sequencing, is a technique that is widely used to study microbiome directly in its environment. And it focuses on the 16S ribosomal RNA that can be amplified with PCR amplification. And the 16S gene sequences contain hypervariable regions that provide species-specific signature sequences useful for bacterial identification. So the bacterial 16S gene contains nine hypervariable regions, V1 to V9, ranging from about 30 to 100 base pairs long that are involved in the secondary structure of the small ribosomal subunit. The degree of conservation varies widely between hypervariable regions with more conserved regions correlating to higher level taxonomy and less conserved regions to lower levels such as genus and species. While the entire 16S sequence allows for comparison of all hypervariable regions at approximately 1500 base pairs long, it can be prohibitively expensive for studies seeking to identify or characterize diverse bacterial communities. These studies commonly utilize the Illumina platform, which produces reads at rates of 50-fold and 12,000-fold less expensive um, than the 454 pyro sequencing and Sanger sequencing, respectively. While cheaper and allowing for deeper community coverage, Illumina sequencing only produces reads that are 75 to 250 base pairs long, up to 300 base pairs with Illumina MySeq, 
and has no established protocol for reliably assembling the full gene and community samples. Full hypervariable regions can be assembled from a single Illumina run, uh, making them ideal targets for the platform. So here you can see that the 16S <coughs> ribosomal RNA, uh, <coughs> about 1500 base pairs long, and then we have these V1 to V9 conserved regions. And so choosing some of them, one or a couple, makes it um, you know, a good candidate for these kinds of studies. Now, to analyze such data, once such data is prepared, we can reference the different databases that contain sequences of the 16S ribosomal gene, like you can see right here, green genes, the 16S ribosomal RNA gene database and tools, or the SILVA, a comprehensive online resource for quality checked and aligned ribosomal RNA sequencing data. So essentially what we can do is once we can generate sequences of those 16S ribosomal RNA genes or the hypervariable regions of those genes, we can search these database and find the best matches to then provide annotation of what have we actually found. So the 16S taxonomic classification uh, is based on the ability to sequence a particular targeted region, which is amplified. So we actually lose the actual um, uh, specific abundance of that particular gene that is present in the sample. Uh, and we can now look at composition. So the proportionate abundance. And so once we look at that annotation, we can use the different levels of taxonomic classification to then assign proportions. And when we talk about baseline studies, we can look at individual regions on the body and we can, for example, establish some composition that is stable across several individuals. So the, um, this is just one of those sequencing techniques. Um, in fact, uh, there are several different other approaches. Um, uh, for example, uh, you can look at RNA-based approaches, metatranscriptomics, or uh, there's a, an ability to sequence all of the, uh, you know, not just the 16S, but try to sequence, especially using long read sequences, uh, sequencers that have become more accessible and, and cheaper in the recent times, uh, we can actually uh, sequence either the full 16S ribosomal RNA gene, which could provide us with ability to better characterize um, the uh, you know, lower level of taxonomy, so it's more detailed, uh, or in some cases even be able to assemble um, the actual full genome, which could be extremely interesting because uh, we can only rely so much on knowing one individual gene only and assuming that everything else stays the same. Now, another uh, uh, kind of ability to study this kind of data is to try and see not only which genomes are present, but also which genes are being transcribed. And so with metatranscriptomics, we're relying on RNA. Uh, here, it's important to separate the genes that are being produced by the host as opposed to um, the uh, actual uh, microorganisms that are present. And then there's also uh, mass spec, uh, mass spectrometry, where we can see uh, analysis of the proteins and the metabolites that are being produced. Um, okay, and Raphael is asking uh, uh, whether 30x coverage is enough. Um, so again, uh, many different applications uh, but, you know, if you have a specific question enough for what, you know, we, we can probably uh, talk about that as well. So ultimately, though, when we have this idea of, uh, you know, what is present um, and maybe in what proportions, um, ultimately, I think the whole field is trying to move in this direction of not only what does that mean that we have more of this microorganism or less of that microorganism, but what is it actually mean functionally, right? How can we use this understanding of composition or what genes are being uh, expressed 
to ultimately say, okay, what does this mean? What is that functional uh, component of this uh, type of information? And for that, I think the whole field is moving into greater detail. Um, and that means combining more and more different types of data to be able to ask these much more specific questions and apply them to uh, things like uh, described here, you know, the impact on the immune system, or maybe interaction with uh, drug uh, metabolism and, and other uh, questions like that.